Hello, everyone. That's the front of the camera. Thank you for joining us for tonight's program. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, I'm Heather Farrell. I'm the curator and director of exhibitions at Burlington City Arts. And I am delighted to introduce our guest tonight for the program, Dr. Pablo Bose, Abdullah Easy, Nagini Fahini, and Paula Higa. Before I turn my time over to my colleague, Dr. Kristen Dykstra, I'd like to share a few remarks about our exhibition and sponsors. Well, here now, Art and Migration brings together seven accomplished national and international artists <laughs> whose work explores concepts of borders, movement, and migration. The exhibit aims to convey the complexity of migration as well as the fluidity of borders. And it's in the here and now, it's in the present moment, it's in the present place. There is an invitation to viewers to widen our perspective of these ideas beyond mere statistics or mere media depictions. During our present moment of unprecedented migration and displacement, here now is a timely exhibit and I feel reveals untold histories and personal experiences through new expressive visual languages. And so my job tonight is to do thank yous. And I'd like to first thank my co-curator from here and now, Dr. Sarah Rogers, who is here tonight. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. She's the visiting assistant professor of history of art and architecture at Middlebury College, as well as a former colleague of mine in Qatar, where we worked at the Montauk, the Arab Institute of Modern Art as well as a Burlington City Arts Advisory Board member. Thought-provoking exhibitions such as Here Now would not be possible without community support. And I'd first like to thank our 2024 Exhibition Year sponsor, Mescoma Bank, the Maslow Family Foundation, and the Vermont Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. And with that, I'd like to turn my time over to Dr. Kristen Dykstra, to introduce tonight's uh, moderator. Thank you, can you all hear me well? Okay, and hello to those of you out on, on Zoom as well. Um, we are here tonight um, in recognition of the fact that our local and regional cultures are vibrant, they're energetic, and they're continuously changing. One source for that renewal is the arrival of artists and thinkers who bridge experience of life elsewhere to our home spaces around the state of Vermont. This panel serves to draw out the ways in which the arts give us important and alternative perspectives on topics that may not get their due in other arenas. Migration is a very rich historical phenomenon and the arts help to unsettle the everyday rhetoric that reduces it to those talking points in the media, which are all too often reductive and dehumanizing. Here now, art and migration works in the opposite direction. It is non-conformist and it is insistently human. We are also proud to be initiating our contributions to that 2024 National Endowment for the Arts grant with the exhibitions that you see here in the building tonight. This grant supports programming that allows teens in particular from our area to explore and create contemporary expressions of identity in the arts. The panel serves to expand the conversation in a different way, and it offers wide ranging, unexpected points of view on the topic of migration, spurring reflection that is essential for rich and democratic conversations. This panel is being recorded as well as shown on Zoom tonight. And with that, um, it is my honor to introduce our panel's moderator. I had to cut his bio way down. Pablo Vos is professor of geography and geosciences and the director of global and regional studies at the University of Vermont. He is a migration scholar and an urban geographer whose work focuses on refugees and resettlement in North America and Europe as well as on cities of the global south, the politics of food access and environmental displacement. Many of you might be interested in his surprisingly readable, although specialized 
book that was published in 2020 entitled Refugees in New Destinations and Small Cities, Resettlement in Vermont. Others will know Pablo from another perspective, which is through his service to organizations based in the city of Burlington and around the state of Vermont. Whether you enjoy Pablo as a scholar creating interdisciplinary knowledge about our area or as a community leader who helps to make things happen around our state, I am sure that you will also enjoy Pablo tonight as our moderator. Thank you so much. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a sense of the structure of the panel today, um, I'll give a brief overview uh, and introduction to the panelists who have joined us here today. Uh, each of them will present a short uh, introduction to their own work, uh, 10 minutes each. Um, we'll then have a brief discussion amongst the panel, and I've asked uh, the audience members to hold your questions for after we uh, initiate that discussion. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so let me give you a brief introduction to our panelists. Um, so for this panel on migration and contemporary cultures in Vermont, we are happy to welcome two members of the Global Collective Art Links uh, to Burlington City Arts tonight. This collective was originally founded in Kabul, Afghanistan in 2014 by Omaid Sharifi and Kabir Mokamel. Both of the founders, along with many other members of the collective, now live outside Afghanistan. Our speakers tonight are currently based in Southern Vermont. Today, the global website for Art Lords emphasizes a commitment to peace. Alongside this commitment, the group provides a statement about the value of art. Art opens up space for emotions without affiliation. It stimulates critical thought and helps people understand that war is a commonly shared experience and that only a common effort coming from within society can bring about peace in Afghanistan, in South Asia, and in the Middle East. We are honored to host Nagina Azimi and Abdullah Hafizi in this panel, where we can hear more about their ways of bridging earlier experiences into the work they have been creating since they moved to Vermont. Each of them brings a specific point of view and their own individual relationships to art as well as activism into the ongoing collaborations that redefine art boards in the here and now. Artist and activist Nagina Azimi joined the Art Lords Collective in 2017 in Kabul, Afghanistan. Today, many members live outside the country and the collective has redefined itself more globally. Now based in Vermont, Azimi holds a degree in law and brings a strong interest in human rights and social empowerment to discussions of public art. Abdullah Hafizi is also an art uh, is an artivist with Art Lords, a group originally founded in Afghanistan and now existing in the global art collective. They are known for creating murals and paintings dedicated to social justice, psychological awareness, and shape. Hafizi is a curator at the nonprofit arts organization Epsilon Spires. He has collaborated and partnered with Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center and other institutions and businesses. He currently, uh, Hafizi currently lives in southern Vermont. Our third panelist is Paula Higa. One of the important features of Here and Now Art and Migration is its presentation of contemporary artists who synthesize cultural forms across multiple disciplines. Lydia Nakashima, for example, blends her research as an ethnographer into her work as a visual artist with powerful results. Uh, Paula Higa brings dance, visual art, and poetry together in her installation, now showing on the ground level here at Burlington City Arts. Higa is a choreographer and movement artist who has been making dances, teaching, and performing between Brazil and the US, USA for more than 30 years. Her performance and video works explore feminism, discrimination, and the politics of movement. She creates these works at intersections between dance and visual arts. As a performer, she danced in works by Mark Morris, Daniel Bernard Roumain, and Jennifer Monson, among others. Higa has received numerous grants, and her recognitions include Best Green Dance in the Los Angeles International Short Film Festival, the Genres and Performances Film Festival in Aveiro, Portugal, Diorama International Film Festival in India, 2022 Nuku Fest in uh, New York City, 
IMARP in Brazil, the ARFF Around International Film Festival in Berlin, Germany, and the Florence Dance on Screen Festival in Italy. Higa is assistant professor and resident choreographer for the School of the Arts Dance Program at the University of Vermont. She currently lives and works in Boston, Vermont. Um, so please join me in welcoming our panel. And we will begin the presentations uh, with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Pablo, for for the introduction. Um, my name is Nigina Azimi and I'm from Afghanistan. And um, back in my home country, I have uh, completed my bachelor degree and also I have a degree uh, in fine arts. And my journey begin, uh, my art journey begin with uh, working with Art Lords, the organization, which was based in Kabul, Afghanistan. And now it's here in Virginia and was founded um, uh, in 2014 by Omid Sharifi and Kabir Mokamel. And the main goal and the main purpose of um, creating mural painting in, in Kabul streets was to convert these blast walls into a piece of art and to make a space for others to um, address our social challenges and uh, to create a, a relationship between between people and also art. And because of the unsafe uh, security situation in our country, there was one side that our country wanted to rebuild everything from the beginning and there was other side of the government which which was the opposite side of the government the Taliban that now they are on power and wanted to damage everything that we wanted to rebuild. Um, so our uh, government came up with the idea of uh, creating or uh, building these uh, long blast walls to at least minimize the damage of those terrorist attack um, in our country. So these blast walls uh, also had a very negative psychological impact in our daily routine. And it, it, it completely looked like that we are living in a war zone in a city and it had a very a very bad psychological impact so art lord realized the opportunity to convert this blast wall into a, a visual experience also to a very good um piece of art so our uh Journey, uh, my journey with Art Lords um, starts uh, in 2017 with this mural painting, and uh, which was um, the female orchestra, Zohra Orchestra in Afghanistan. And uh, unfortunately, after the Taliban took over the country, all of these uh, paintings and mural paintings were whitewashed by the Taliban. And our... Um, main focus was to um, uh, support our soldiers and also um, to bring colors in our city. And the primary goal was to um, highlight the significant contribution of women in our society and in, in rebuilding the country and to emphasize their rule and their uh, power in building and also their involvement in peace negotiation during that time that was happening between the government and the Taliban. And we wanted them to be uh, equally uh, uh, involved on those peace negotiation. As you can see that we created lots of mural painting uh, in Kabul uh, city and also in other provinces. Um, uh, 
most of these um, paintings were also uh, uh, aimed to promote uh, the message of peace and harmony between our people. And these were the very icon or very uh, uh, symbol of the art lords, a mural painting. And uh, also to paint the prominent faces of our country. This uh, paint, it's not a mural painting, but it's its a very big uh, canvas painting that we gifted to the United Nation. Uh, and it's here now and will be uh, displaying the United Nation of, uh, for over 50 years. And in this uh, painting, we wanted to uh, paint the most valuable element of Afghanistan that were very uh, uh, valuable for us like the mountain the culture the costumes the uh, history and every side of our uh, uh, lives that were uh, very valuable for us and of upon arriving our um, into our new community in vermont so uh, we not only brought ourselves but we also brought our um, art culture and a skill. So it signifies that being a refugee does not mean uh, equate to receiving, not giving back. So we, uh, as a part of, uh, uh, to adopt our new community, to, to, um, to completely adopt it, adopt it uh, we brought our um, uh, art and culture and we shared our uh, art with the students in the school, with our uh, community member. And also it, it exemplifies the beauty of uh, respect, the beauty of um, growth, shared growth, and also um, the beauty of um, being together and acceptance uh, in the process of adopting in um, our new community. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. Um, I hope you all are fine. Um, Thank you, Pablo, for introducing me. And uh, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, everyone, for having us today in here. Uh, thank you for having us this chance, this privilege to talk about these issues and these topics today. Um, my name is Abdullah Hafizi. I am one of the members of the Art Lords. Um, I live in Bradboro, Vermont. It's It has been two years that I'm living in the USA. And we have been continuing our um, journey, creating arts and different levels individually and also publicly for the different organizations and also uh, towns. So um, as Nagina said that we work with the art lords creating a lot of murals on blast walls in Kabul city and also some other cities in Afghanistan. But after the takeover of Taliban, the terrorists and August 15, 2021. Um, it was a nightmare. Uh, this picture shows everything and this was a, a global image. Right after the takeover, the, the city was a total dead city for every one of us. But what happened to Art Lord and to the team? We had to like leave the country and it was hard for all of us. Um, a lot of civilians had to flee in a different situation, but we were uh, we were happy that we got a, a, a good chance that we left in a very safe way. But we ended up finding ourselves in Albania, a country that we had just heard its name once a time in our uh, in schools, maybe in geography, but that was uh, still beautiful. <clears throat> we were living a very uh, shiny life, but at the same time. Our families were back in Afghanistan and the people that how they were living. So it was like a, a, a conflict inside our own mind. Like, how can we live in a very sparky and 
glamorous way of life by the beach in a very a five star hotel while the people are like not having uh, fun like us. So it was hard for us at the same time. Um, but we still uh, continued making murals. We uh, we did a mural, this one, <clears throat> to express our gratitude and thank to the government and the people of Albania. They are really hospitable people, really nice and friendly people. Uh, when we were there, all of us, most of them, they were resonating with us and they were telling us that we feel you because we had the same thing during 90s, during the civil war. So it was nice. We felt home. I myself felt in peace and freedom. We did another mural in a very in the center of um, Tirana, the, the capital of Albania. And after that, we found ourselves in USA. In the USA, um, we started our artwork uh, with a very small mural for um, this one, uh, Angel's Wings for Experience Good, a business. So it was nice. And then we continued making mural. This is, this. Uh, if you can hold on a little bit, um, this one is a very great artwork. I'll, I'll have the control. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so we got connection with Brattleboro Museum and um, Art Center. They found a way to bring other muralists and they had a very different medium, which was tape art. And we got together to find a way, how can we collaborate? So um, the guys, uh, I just forgot their name, but uh, they are at the end of, um, they are standing, yeah, at the end. So uh, they said, like, why not to recreate all those paintings that are whitewashed back in Afghanistan with a new medium? Oh, that that's just, that sounds a great idea. Yes, and we did it. We did a lot of, um, like, almost 17 murals in the town. We created 17 murals. Uh, like, we recreated, but we added a lot of elements with tape, and people loved it. People were so sad because after 14 days, they had to be taken down because they're... Uh, tape and it does not uh, you know stick around for a long time so that was a thing and yeah uh, this was a new thing for all of us and it was fun the um, the poetry that's written in there is uh, it's about humanity one of the poems of uh, Maulana Jalaluddin Balhi or also uh, he is uh, famous by the name of Rumi from 11th century uh, he says, he talks about, um, I mean, he writes about uh, humanity. So uh, this one was, uh, th this one was my favorite mural around those uh, tape art murals. Um, at the same time, while we had, we were creating murals with a tape art group, uh, we had a chance to have a, a grant, some amount of money from uh, Vermont Folklife Center and this was, uh, they proposed us like, uh, what what can you guys do with this grant? Like, uh, it, it can be for um, children, summer camp. So we said, we can do something like this. We can bring 15 children from the Brattleboro community, the American people, and uh, also 15 kids from the Afghan community. And then we will bring them, they, uh, we will teach them dance, we, uh, traditional dances. We will teach them art, painting, uh, drawing. We will... Um, um, uh, yeah, and uh, we also danced together. We uh, we cooked food, traditional foods. When we also uh, yeah served the food to the public, we we called their parents, and it was fun. It was a one week art camp, and it was a blast for uh, us and also for the kids and their families. Uh, in the back, we had a mural. That's America and also a map of Afghanistan, but different elements of uh, uh, values related to Afghanistan's culture that is like um, incorporated, integrated with American uh, flag and also the um, map. Uh, right after that, we got another opportunity to create mural in Brattleboro, but this was more of creating uh, or bringing beauty to the town, uh, which is the high street, Brattleboro. If you ever um, 
cross your path to Brattleboro, don't miss this. This is very beautiful. Um, high street mural. And we had a collaboration with two local artists, Daniel Chiachu and Calvin Latouri. They are amazing. They are great art artists. And this is about Vermont, this mural. Um, after that, we got another chance to create another mural, which was uh, also still a recreation of our old mural from uh, Kabul, but a little change with a little uh, addition to the background patterns. But ex uh, that is pattern, but not exactly. It's a, a miniature, Persian miniature from Afghanistan. This is the full image. Uh, we got another opportunity with Putney International School where we co-created a lot of uh, four murals with the students and we collaborated, um, got our ideas together and made four murals with the kids. This was another artwork with um, Vital Voices. It's a nonprofit organization who works for women empowerment in Washington, D.C. So this was uh, a mural for women. Um, we had a privilege to see Clinton that time. And so it, she appreciated our artwork. And thanks to her for that. Right after that, we had another chance with Counterpart Inter International in D.C., they offered us a mural to create for them about women rising together. And right after that, we again partnered with Vital Voices for Women Empowerment and Women's Voices and Peace. And we are still continuing making art work and murals back in Brattleboro and also outside of Brattleboro in Bennington. Soon in the future, we have a lot of things, a lot of murals to do. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, BCA, Pablo, for having me here, Kristen. And I feel honored to be here with you too <laughs> and represent my community. So yes, I'm Paula Higa. I am um, a choreographer, scholar, mother, wife, woman, and the artistic director of my own dance company, Paula Higa Dance. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my artistic interest uh, lies in exploring themes that uh, emerge uh, the intersection of dance and visual arts. So my works are rooted in feminism and aim to shed light to discriminatory issues that persist in our society. So through my work, I seek to amplify the voices of uh, uh, underrepresented uh, groups and engage my audience to reflect on, on social issues as um, power inequalities, gender, no, power hierarchies, gender inequalities, and patriarchal structures that uh, shape our world. So based on these themes, I created the Migrant Body Project, which is uh, a solo performance and a collaboration with uh, visual artist Deborah Weisberg, where I examine my skin and uh, the second part is the film. It's a screen dance, which is now being exhibited at the uh, Here Now, <laughs> uh, curated by Heather and Sarah. And then I also create um, a live performance, which is the you know live version of the film that premiered at the Eichmann Family Farm uh, last spring. Uh, it's a huge barn. So based on this interest, like I said, I create these three projects. So of course, uh, the migrant body, in, you know, inerted from my uh, experience as being an immigrant in the state of Vermont. So I started to face things that uh, when I lived in Texas, in Tennessee, 
I didn't experience like people asking me to, can you repeat your accent? They do, couldn't understand my accent. Questioning about my skin color. I'm not a white woman here. But if I go back to the Brazil, I am. So I said, oh, this is interesting. What about people who doesn't have this privilege, you know, like me of changing my, my racial status, you know? So all these, you know, uh, situations that I was exposed, you know, uh, triggered in me this critical question. So who is not migrating? Who is not a migrant in this world? So this scene for me is represents a lot because for me, birth is the first migration. So if you think of the word uh, migration as a movement that people, you know, are uh, dislocating from one piece, one place to the other. So I thought about the birth of, okay, so we are in this wet environment, breathing water, soundproof a little bit, <laughs> you know, and suddenly, you know, they grab your head, you have to breathe air, you need to scream, you need to learn how to speak. So you are in, in a new environment. So in a poetic way, for me, birth is our first migration. And we all went through this process, which make us equal. And then um, I also have the image of the doors for me. The fact that you leave your parents' house to go to college is a form of migration. The fact that you get married is a form of migration. That you find another job or another house. Anyway, we are always open doors and closing doors in our life. So for me, it's migration too, you know? And then on the top of that, uh, I ask, you know, I, uh, with, uh, to, for the film, I collaborate with uh, international uh, artists, uh, people from Canada, Brazil, uh, local. The, the film was all made here in Vermont. Uh, my dancers, they are all locals. And uh, I also ask, uh, you know, uh, Mario Higa is a professor at Middlebury College and my husband <laughs> to, <laughs> to write a poem that could, uh, you know, uh, could, uh, in a short words, uh, simplify this idea of uh, this desire of uh, you want to migrate, but you can't. So he came up with the yellow chrysanthemum, which is a flower that is stuck with the roots in the soil, but wants to, to go and explore to see other colors, other shapes, other forms. But uh, the only way that this flower can uh, migrate is through pollination. So the film for me is something very special. Like I said, you know, because it uh, was made with uh, people from different parts of the world. And uh, yes, we won some awards in Europe or North America, South America. And uh, if you have a chance, please go to the ground zeros <laughs> uh, and see the, the, the film. And yes, I don't get that. <laughs> that was fascinating. Uh, thank you all um, for presenting some of your work. Um, I'm just gonna ask a few questions to lead us off and then we'll turn to the audience as well. <clears throat> um, Kristen, in her introduction, uh, and Heather as well, talked a little bit about the really reductive and politicized ways in which we tend to think about um, migration today. And a lot of these, this kind of noise that surrounds the notion of what migration can be. Um, it really struck me as I looked at what you were presenting, um, some of the ways in which you were responding to things that are been going on around you. And I wondered just to begin with, if you can talk a little bit about um, who some of your audiences are. When you started by showing uh, the murals on the glass wall, um, you know, it, it actually made me think a little bit about the murals that I've seen in uh, cities like Belfast, uh, as a way of kind of reclaiming space. You talked a little bit about 
the purpose behind some of those murals that you made. When you showed this range of, of new art that you created here in Vermont or in the US or in Albania, um, it seemed to speak to all sorts of different kinds of audiences that you are working with. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that. And similarly, Paula, um, in, in thinking about these different migration journeys that you described um, and the different places that you've also uh, exhibited your work. I'm wondering if you can, all of you, talk a little bit about who you make this art for. Um, and also, sorry, this is a really long question, but um, a little bit about making this art um, for the outside world. You know, you talked about these classes you've taught and um, pieces that you've had commissioned and art that you might make um, for your own community. So can you talk a little bit about the audience that you think? Um, so basically we are doing our artwork first for ourselves, for our own people that they are back in our home country. Um, I mean, uh, we are here, we have the all uh, the whole freedom to talk, to uh, exercise our own basic rights, but there are tons of our uh, community member, um, uh, our, our people in, in our country that they are deprived for, uh, from their very basic rights, uh, like going to school, uh, women and girls cannot go to school and um, they have been deprived from their very fundamental rights. So basically it's for us, for our people and our audience is our new community here. And also the whole other people that they can uh, understand our mural paintings here. It's completely different from Afghanistan, but it's not that we 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 have changed our aim or our goal or our mission. Our mission is to advocate. Our mission is to raise our voices and those voices that they cannot be heard. I mean our people so basically mostly our new people our new community here is our own audience for all of our mural paintings actually uh it, this question has so many aspects um coming going back to afghanistan uh our murals we we want it to be heard Recently, I have found and I have like deeply, truly understood how it really means to be heard and to be seen and to be valued through my uh, failed relationships. And so, yeah, yeah experiences teaches us. Uh, so that's how I learned. Yeah. So we wanted to be heard back in Afghanistan. We wanted to share these murals. Uh, and also send these uh, uh, ideas or these um, messages to the Taliban specifically that what they were doing exactly. And also to the government, we are seeing you. We have eyes. We see everything. The deal that you're doing with America, with the Qatar, with the Taliban, we are seeing you because you're betraying us. So that was one part. The other part that we were advocating for women, women like there is still patriarchy in Afghanistan. And that was the other part. Uh, women empowerment to uh, to raise uh, women's power, and also for the children's right. There are a lot of street childrens, and they they don't have food, they don't have uh, clothes to wear, shoes, and those things. So it has a lot of aspects. Um, coming back to USA, uh, we still wanted to be heard and continue our advocacy for social justice. While we are still here, we are more safe. We can still uh, raise our voices for the people back in Afghanistan. And, and a lot of people can resonate with our uh, mural artwork. Um, and the, in, the, in Vermont or in Brattleboro, our, um, our people, the community, they are the people who we want to share our murals and they are, we want to be heard by them. And the other part that I do 
uh, murals sometimes uh, on commission personally or individual uh, paintings for myself is uh, most specifically about the psychological issues that we have uh, that's loneliness that's very on rise nowadays uh, specifically with the gen z and the late millennials like myself um, because we have been feeling isolating sometimes and why is this uh, happening because in the middle east or uh, far middle east afghanistan or central asia we never felt like this because we had family friends uh, despite the fact that we do have friends in here, but still there is a, there is a, um, a void, you know, uh, and somehow uh, my aim and my mission is to um, to find a way where we can uh, connect together back and uh, share more empathy, more closeness, these things, because we are um, failing to gain these values back. We are more on the superficial parts of the a world more to the materialist part of this world. So that's uh, that's another part for my individual artwork. Yeah, for me, it's kind of the same, you know, I think as an artist, we are always creating first for ourselves, you know, <laughs> and then it's a consequence, you know, if the world embraces our work, wow, great. If not, great too, you know. So I also feel that... Uh, I don't know, in life, what is my purpose here, you know? So for me, dance is bigger than the dance. And this is what I want to leave, you know, when I move, when I migrate to another, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a place. So I hope that my work stays, that people will comment, that people will recycle the ideas, you know, and that uh, a change will come. So it's interesting, Paula, you also mentioned some of the unexpected aspects of, of doing this work here in Vermont, um, having a different racial uh, perceptions of race uh, here. So I'm curious for all three of you, what are some of the challenges, uh, if any, that you've experienced in trying to make this, this kind of creative practice here in Vermont? Are there any specific things that come to mind as, as being more difficult than making this art here in Vermont? Um, personally, to me, I really want to create a lot of artwork, but because we are migrated now here alone, we don't have our families here, and the families, they don't have a chance to work in there. So we work full-time outside our um field art and so that's that's a challenge that despite the fact that i want to create a lot of art and i can't because i have to send money back to uh, my family so that's a big challenge someone who is really passionate about like he he can die for art so uh that's that's the biggest challenge and yeah uh it can Economic or financial thing is the 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 first one, and then also psychological issues that we get. We we can't focus sometimes. Like myself, I I wouldn't say my we, but myself, um, focus is really important for art making or creativity. We uh, I do lose um my focus, and yeah, we do miss our families. And the other challenges uh, would be sometimes sometimes like we might not be able to create some political artwork uh, in a town that doesn't need like the high street mu mural. If uh, if you guys remember the high street mural, that that uh, that wall was uh, empty for years in there. And a lot of artists had applied for town's grant to get that grant and do some mural on that. But they more wanted political stuff, which the government or the town municipality, they didn't want something like that. They wanted to give it to the youth. And it was something like we got this chance and we had to create something for uh, the beauty of the uh, town. So not a lot of places or uh, communities or public would want something politi political as well because politics, it's it sucks. Who who likes? I don't like politics. So that's, a, that's also a part of it. Could be... Um, so like I would like to create art that's more about love, harmony, empathy, connections... Like these things, I'm I'm very emotional person, so I'm on that part of 
I'm away from politics. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for me, uh, you know, I come from a country that is so miscegenated, you know, so you see a palette of colors in Brazil. And I wanted my cast, my dancers to, you know, uh, to be like uh, my experience there. So I had a hard time to find dancers that were not white. So I remember attending the black experience, uh, not this year, last year. And uh, I said, oh, so many black people here. Where are these people that I don't see on the streets, you know? And I connect to a, 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 a dancer, but uh, when I explained the project and the cast, uh, I don't know, perhaps she felt intimidated and she didn't join us. And then I said, oh my gosh, uh, I went to, uh, I think it was Momex, was at the Flim. And I said, let me see if I can find more dancers, only white people in the audience. And I, and I even told Mario, I said, wow, I thought segregation was over. <laughs> you know, so all this, you know, lack of a diversity in this state was challenging for me, you know, and uh, this is something that I discussed with my dancers and uh, but I said, you know, let's do our best and uh, the work's there. <laughs> so but definitely, you know, it was challenging. Yeah, uh, I agree. And just to add, because uh, back in Afghanistan, uh, we never called ourselves like an artist, but mostly we called ourselves an activist. And our all mural painting were somehow uh, connected to political issues that we were facing during that time. And now that we are here, it, it's been changed. And uh, when we are getting a commission, we somehow our mind goes back to like advocacy and we want to paint this. But there's like, I mean, most of the time we get a notice, not political mural painting. So it should be just the beauty. I mean, uh, I agree it should be the beauty, the harmony, the peace, but not every mural can include all those things. So we have to uh, be very accepted with with very diverse uh, paintings or uh, activities or activism. Um, but here, most of our works were uh, very um, calm and very peace, uh, harmony connected with uh, love and peace. And we are somehow we are very happy. We felt very good during. Well, let me ask you a little bit on that question of how we talk about more difficult subjects. Um, you know, migration, as we've said already, is a very con controversial subject. Um, I often feel teaching classes with students, I'm like, oh, I, I wish I was just teaching, I don't know, a class about food. And maybe that would be easier, less politically charged. Um, so does migration also play a role in the kind of art that you do. I mean, Paola, it's obviously very central to what it is that you are, um, <clears throat> what you're doing. How do you talk about migration in this particular moment in the world where migration has such resonance, both positive and negative, for different kinds of people? I mean, what, what ways, you, know, you talked a lot about the, all the different kinds of forms that migration might take. Um, do you also talk about migration in this much more political, political way? Uh, well, with my dancers, we had a lot of discussions because there are Jewish, there was a girl, she's uh, a Jew and a uh, black dancer. So a uh, one that is uh, transgender. So I think that, uh, you know, even this, 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 this for, for uh, they, <laughs> This, this, we, we discussed the transition of uh, being a woman to now a man, you know? So this for us was a form also of uh, migration. And uh, anyway, there was so many possibilities, you know? But I didn't want to also focus on the negative and political side because of, for me in particular, I think that I learned so much when I immigrated, you know? 
I think that uh, the fact that I learned a new language, a new culture, I think this is so rich, you know, and only when you migrate, when you leave that experience, you, you feel, you know, how important is this process of getting to know other places, even if it's a tourist, you know, it's important. And, uh, but yeah, for me is this, you know, of course there are political, you know, uh, perspective on that. Like for me, even the sensing of belonging, where do I belong? Do I belong in Brazil? Do I belong here? I feel in the middle, you know, because uh, everything that I left there kept going. So when you go back, my nephew is not five years old anymore. You know, he's getting married and I don't know the family. I, I lost all the teenagerhood of my nephews and my parents also, you know, didn't see my girls uh, growing up. So there is, you know, uh, the the good and the bad side. And also in terms of uh, for me, for instance, I am an American citizen now. But uh, once I heard uh, a foreigner, you know, an immigrant saying, I am an American citizen on paper. And this is exactly how I feel because I was not here, you know, during the civil rights, you know. I I, I don't I, I I was going to understand better what racism was when I came here. I remember um I Julian, what is the name of the the choreographer with the, the black girl? Camille A. Brown. Yeah, Camille A. Brown. She came to Flynn. And with this piece, this choreography, uh, Black Girl, and I said, why she's talking about that? You know, I couldn't understand how, you know, racism was so strong and is in this country, you know, because of my entire, you know, political background was from Brazil. So anyway, it's, it's a learning thing, you know, I don't think of, there's gonna be a change soon, but, uh, like you said, you know, there's the good side and the bad side, you know, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bilal, uh, do you find that there's this tension between the kinds of murals that you want, the kind of art that you want to, to make between, as you say, kind of steering clear of more political topics here or what you're being sort of asked um, to, to commission to paint versus the, the activism that perhaps is the uh, inspiration for some of the work? Oh, we do uh, face issues like that, uh, but it's been just two years. We haven't had so much. Um, but yeah, uh, I do express myself by telling my stories, like here, we are sharing a lot of things today. Um, by writing, I did some uh, writing classes where I had so many classmates, totally from Brattleboro, Vermont. I mean, from Vermont. I mean, the white people. It doesn't mean like uh, in, a, in that sense. So uh, I had a total different faces where I had the chance to tell the stories. I, I, I shared a lot of stories from my childhood, from like very creatively, from um, uh, youth, from now, and a lot of poetry. So that was also a part of my life where I could share. And the murals are the other one. And here, this is another example where we can uh, share our stories. And uh, yeah, migration, I think it's, uh, it's consciously not acceptable for anyone. But subconsciously, for people who migrate, it's 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 a it's a, like the only way for for us. Like, uh, it would be the only way for me um, to like to choose a path because I couldn't stay back in Afghanistan. Uh, I have to go forward and make a better life. Uh, but it's a fact. Migration is a fact. We have to accept it and the way it is, and just move on, um, be a better person in our life. So the last question I'll ask is just a more technical one. You mentioned that um, some of the members of the Art Lords Collective um, are here in Vermont, but there are others, I think you said in Virginia. Um, so what is the coordination or, or collaboration with other members of the collective now? Do you continue to partner with them in projects? Um, we are still member of Art Lords, uh, uh, although our 
other colleagues they are still back in Afghanistan. We were 53 employees and out of 53 employees, maybe some of us, five of us are here, um, some of us um, in Tennessee and our main office and our director, he lives in Virginia. So we have an office, uh, we have an office in Virginia. Uh, and we are connected to each other. I mean, uh, as I mentioned before that our mission is the same, advocacy, I mean, uh, and still we are, uh, uh, actively uh, working together we as a five member of art lords here in Vermont and we have other members back in Canada and also in Europe countries and we have been working after what happened in Afghanistan after uh, August 15 2021 we we never stopped our uh, mission we never stop our activities uh, starting from uh uh, Albania that we spent eight months there we painted two mur murals there and when we got here we like lots of mural painting and uh, in partnership with other organizations so we are we have our own job but we are still connected to each other and we are part of Art Lords yes wonderful thank you uh, with that let me open it up to the audience and see if there are questions that you would like to ask. Is this on? It's on. I will bring you a microphone if you would like to ask a question of our panelists. So just flag me down if you'd like to ask one. Thanks. Um, how has work that you've seen since migrating influenced your own art practices uh, here in Vermont? So uh, that conversation worked in both ways. I love that question. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. It is a. It's a sky and art difference. The art, but what I have seen in the USA so far because i've been to so many museums in boston in new york and here mass mocha the the ginormous one uh, yeah uh, it is a big one uh, so what i saw what i experienced a totally different artwork from what we had been doing back because it's east and west so uh, i should accept that but uh it really changed my perspective of art, what I've been thinking, what I've been imagining in my mind, and how can I bring that back with the medium? So what I was doing is very classic. What I heard from my teacher, uh, Jenny Dunning in uh, creative writing, she said, uh, it's more of still like a uh, classic. So I was thinking, how can I make my art more modern, more contemporary and creative? So yeah, going to these uh, different places, visiting these places, really influenced me to um to uh, yeah to have it and change the way that, that I was thinking previously and blend both of them in a way that I can uh, create a totally different thing yeah thank you well for me it was wonderful because uh, I, you know, here in this state, I was introduced to experimental dance. And, uh, you know, I was, I'm very fortunate to have uh, colleagues at my, at UVM and the dance program who are daring, who are political, who are activists. So for me, it's a learning, you know, experience. So, and also, I think the political story, you know, of this country, you know, things that I was not aware when I was in Brazil, because Brazil is all about uh, carnival. <laughs> we love to party, you know, but <laughs> and, and I was I was even talking to my husband about that. I said, how can we, you know, change the traditions? I said, well, imagine if uh, there is no more carnival in Brazil. I said, hey, don't say that, you know, <laughs> because uh, this is part of uh, our who we are. So for me, I started to see dance in through other lands, you know, and not just commercial or technical, but uh, 
as a act as a act of uh, political act of uh, expressing voices and uh, I'm grateful for you know this experience that this state you know and my colleagues which is here Julian <laughs> was an inspiration for me and Tina <laughs> and <laughs> yeah I'm sorry I'm gonna stop laughing <laughs> and pointing fingers <laughs> Uh, we always um, talking about that uh, we are very fortunate that we ended up in Vermont, a very artistic state, um, and uh, we have uh, we have very good connection with other local artists in Brattleboro, and we have been inspired by their artworks. Uh, basically, our artwork, it is graphic uh, graffiti artworks, but um, also watching other uh, artists and their uh, modern art and how they are collaborating with other uh, um, different types of arts, they really inspired us. And that's why we call ourselves very lucky people that all five of us uh, all together ended up in here, Vermont. If I may, I'd like to interject a question myself. Um, it, this may come back around to the topic of migration, but it occurred to me that also a feature that you all have in common is you have a lot of experience with collaboration and collaboration is a very current topic as well for contemporary art. And so I'd like to ask each of you, is there a moment you remember that you feel that you learned something about collaboration? What advice would you give to young artists who want to learn how to be good collaborators or want to work with other people? You have so many different kinds of collaboration that you've done. Um, thank you for the such a great question, because this is, again, something that I really love it, uh, collaboration. Um, I would do individual artwork more about what is happening inside my brain, but collaboration is something that's, um, that's uh, something jointly we do work together. But uh, the advice that I would give to the young generation or the, um, uh, yeah, the new uh uh, Gen Z or all the other uh, upcoming generations as that in collaboration you will you will you will bring out something amazing and unimaginable because uh, it's bringing so many ideas together so many imaginations together and it 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 becomes something totally different while individual artwork is uh, it's still good it's different but uh, collaboration is uh, different as well and uh, what I would say, like, listen to each other, listening. Um, listening is a very important part of collaboration and teamwork. Um, working together, just just create something uh, out of what you uh, hear from each other. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's the same. I think that, uh, you know, when you are collaborating, you have to be open to different voices and opinions and ideas. And uh, when I collaborate, like uh, in this film, I was the director, but I also invited a local filmmaker because I'm not a filmmaker to be my co-director. So we were, you know, sharing uh, opinions and ideas. And if I think if you are close to your own, stuck with your own ideas, there's no progress, you know, because uh, every person uh, in the group is a special. They do have something to offer. And so even you, if you are directing in a, in a position that there has more power, I think it's important for you to, to listen, you know? And, uh, and again, enjoy the process because uh, the results, you don't know, you know? <laughs> but the process for me is the most important thing, you know? So the, this entire film, what, took me two years, you know, to come with the idea and the plot and the poem. I don't know how many times, you know, if it's your husband, it's okay to, you know, say things. Because <laughs> Mario was like, no, Mario, I didn't like this poem. But then anyway, we work together, <laughs> you know, but he's my husband. I think I have the right to, to pick on him. 
But uh, anyway, I think that uh, is this, you know, be open to the process, listen, listen, because, uh, you know, we are, no one is, has the truth, you know, on yourself, you know, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, the same. And uh, uh, just to want to add that we are in a pro uh, process of learning. So let's be open to any ideas or any uh, insight from other people or other artists. It adds more, more value to your artwork and the result would be outstanding. Also, like to see if we have a question coming in from Zoom audience. I think we do. Should I bring you the mic back there? So Jennifer asked, um, she runs a resettlement program in Norfolk, Virginia, and goes back and forth to Brattleboro working with SIT slash ECDC, um, and is curious where the art lords are located based in Virginia. And she's doing her PhD research on conflict migration and would love to connect with everyone from the VA, VT, Art Lord community, if possible. Um, our director and the office located in Virginia, in Ashburn, Virginia, we have our website, Art Lords, both in Facebook and in Instagram. And also you can uh, Google it and you will find our, um, the address there. Um, so it's basically Ashburn, Virginia. And if you want to meet us, we are here, Brattleboro. Please feel free to flag me down if you would like to ask a question. We have a little bit of time left. Um, yes. I'm going to make three statements and want to know what you have to say about them. Say about they're about politics. I'm going to say painting a mural in Brattleboro, Vermont is a political act. Telling your story is a political act. And collaboration is a political act. What do you think of that? Well, I mean, um, as I said earlier, that I stay away from politics. Because that's the only reason that I'm here today in the USA, apart from my family and a lot of friends that are like found their ways into different uh, cities. And a lot of people like me, exactly from different countries, uh, like Middle East, uh, um, Latin America or Asian countries. So um, I stay away, but I do have the guts to face these kind of um words or sentences from those kind of people where I can answer them in a very better way that look, this is a reality. We have to accept it. Accept it. Today, if you're in the USA, you are also your ancestors were they were migrate they migrated to the USA. You're not here originally from like this uh America. And, and this is the reality. Yeah, you people, some were born in here. Uh, and so you're from America, but your ancestors are exactly from Europe or from uh, other uh, countries. Um, so we have to have that acceptance. Uh, otherwise, um, there, there, there will be more di uh, diversion, more uh, differences. Differences will create more tension and more and more. So where we will lead to that. So we need to be um, uh have a radical acceptance that psychologists say we need to uh, have radical acceptance so that really helps when you have that feeling of acceptance it it calms your um inner person really down and makes you a better human being thank you well i agree i think dance is political arts is political and life is political so yes i am a political art artist and yes i'm advocating for some respect you know <laughs> and it's life you know what i mean how can you separate uh, politics from the arts you know some I, again i think that's a people who they have different opinions but uh, no in my work no i'm i'm trying to make a statement you know so yes 
<laughs> Definitely, it is political act while I'm sitting here talking with you all um, and my, uh, my own sister and brothers back in Afghanistan, they cannot do the same thing that I'm doing now here. It is a political act. And uh, as I mentioned that maybe our mural paintings are different, but our mission and goal is still the same and it's political. And as you mentioned that we are here to make a statement um, and I've been working with uh, students in a school and I've been giving them um, presentation about my country, my culture. It is a political act. And uh, painting Persian words on the wall of a school, it's a political act. So it is. I can't not say something uh, um, I mean, I, I do think that it's a political act, absolutely. But I think it's a very particular kind of political act that you can do in Brattleboro, Vermont, or in Vermont, in ways that we are in the midst of the dumbest cultural wars I can imagine, right? In this country, right? Like really, really ridiculous kinds of posture over what it means to have Persian words painted in the school. And that's that's the the challenge that I think we continue to grapple with. Like what does it mean to even talk about the tradition in, in, not, in not using words that are intentionally different? So I think that that is, so I'm always uh, amazed by the, the courage that people demonstrated making this kind of, you know, in performing um, what this means. Mm -hmm. We have time for one final question and you get the last question. So here it comes. Thank you for giving me the last question. <laughs> it has to be a good one. Um, I wanted to thank you for sharing your story and your work. And I think it's really important to talk about this topic and issue, especially in Burlington, Vermont, where the diversity is not very much. So my question is, I'm really excited for your future plan. So I wanted to ask, uh, like, if you have unlimited funding and time and space, what would you make? What's your project going to be? Oh, <laughs> I wish. Um, I mean, that would be a blessing in the sky. I would I would devote my whole life, even if I uh, reincarnate, <laughs> I will still do it, because um, I really love all parts of art, performing arts, uh, visual arts, all of them. I love dance. I do dance. I write. I paint. I draw. So all those parts are amazing. I do like films, movies. I'm very obsessed with Hollywood uh, since childhood. Uh, that was a part that I already know about the USA a lot but most of them were not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, back to your question. Um, uh, I would devote my whole life, my each second to art. And I will, I will, I will create as much art as I can. <laughs> like, um, uh, I wouldn't like compare myself, but uh, Van Gogh, like he died very early, but he created so much art that still is there. And people are monetizing his artwork today yeah well uh for me you know uh i see uh screen dance as a form to promote my work a little bit more to distribute my work a little bit more than if i bring my dancers you know to tour because uh it requires you know fundings but since you said unlimited you know i think i would take my dancers you know uh to perform uh, around the world but uh, for me definitely I would like to to continue this examination on what we are what we are doing in this world you know what we're gonna leave here and uh, I, I also you know I think about uh, the solar eclipse I, I think about this is a time for us to stop instead of oh, cool, you know that's okay 
but make a self a reflection, you know, in this time that we are all there in this collective moment in the dark, you know, what's the meaning of darkness? You know, how can we go to situations that are horrible, but come out stronger, you know? So I want to continue this, you know, fight for, like I said, on the represented groups, which now I am part, because if I go back to Brazil, I have my, my white privilege, you know? But now that I'm here in this state, United States of America, and I am in the BIPOC community, I am a different person, you know? And I, and I feel that um, I need to continue to advocate for those who are in situations like me or even worse. Because when I am immigrated, I came in a privileged position because my husband came to earn his PhD and we were never uh, illegal here. We were never refugees, but uh, I was treated like one. So for me, this, you know, shed light on the, on my, my artistic goals, you know? So it was important for me to go into the dark and come out stronger. Niche. Uh, unlimited fund, like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I wish instead of unlimited fund, there would be power. So it would definitely change my goal or my um, upcoming planning. But for unlimited fund, I would maybe building a art school or just a part to serve it um, to education that everyone could access to that without any uh, limitation, without uh, regardless of race, color, region, country, so they could have access to that. So, uh, to, to wrap up, I have to refer back to your final question there, which I'm really struck by because I asked that exact question to Edward James Olmos about 15 years ago. And if you're not, Edward James Olmos was big in the Chicano movement and very important in Mexican-American culture, also was on Battlestar Galactica, that Edward James Olmos. And he said, he got very excited because we were like, oh, if you didn't have to think about money and you know, in film, what would you make? And he said, I would do work with indigenous peoples of the Americas. And he had a really beautiful answer. I would like to tie that around to the shows in this building. Do not overlook Teresa Baker um, from Plains Tribes. She's in the migration show. And so migration, mobility, deep histories of presence, but also movement um, are in Teresa Baker's work. And then uh, our other show right now up in the building is Margaret Jacobs, an enrolled member of the Aquasasne Mohawk uh, tribe. And we welcome you to see that room. It's directly across from where you, you are sitting right now. Um, and Margaret, although she's not technically in the migration show, uh, pairs very, very beautifully with some of the issues that we were actually talking about tonight. Um, I will end again thanking everybody for coming here tonight. Thank you to all of our amazing panelists and to our moderator, to everybody who donated money to make this happen. Thank you so much. And lastly, if you do not mind, we have evaluations on the floor under a lot of your seats, or if there aren't enough, we have some more in the hall. If you would kindly fill those out, we would be so grateful because that also helps us to get more funding to continue to do these. And Sarah Jane would like me to add. Oh yes, and we will. We are actually going to keep the um, the building open a little extra, particularly downstairs. We welcome you to join us for the next half hour to just chat and relax and also go see some of that artwork including Teresa Baker and the other members of um of this show um I'm not sure I don't think we have the ground level tonight open still is that correct this the is Paul is Paulo's show open it is okay so yes 
you can see the work of our exhibiting artist who's part of this panel discussion tonight. So thank you all very much. And we hope to see you downstairs.